what's going on YouTube so I've been getting a bunch of questions on Instagram <clears throat> about you know what do you need to get into filming your hunts I know for the longest time I had a lot of memories that I had wished that I had had video of had footage of or film whatever and it took me a little while to actually see what guys were using on YouTube what guys were using on TV what what was able to be feasible for really good quality content, whether that be audio, video, etc. So I'm just gonna go through the gear that I run. Again, this is just personal to me because there is so much camera equipment out there. You can really spend a lot of money on some of this stuff and you don't necessarily need to spend into the thousands to create really quality stuff that you can either have as keepsakes for yourself if you want to document it for YouTube um, or start your own channel or your own show. So I'm going to dive into what I use, what I feel works best for me. And I'll go into the audio, the actual cameras itself, and then the camera tree arm that I use when I'm actually in the tree. And then throughout this video, I'll show some of the footage that I've actually taken with these cameras, some of the audio I've taken with this, these cameras, some of the angles and different shots based off of using the, the tree arm, hunting solo, but this setup here is mainly a solo setup. This can get you started. Again, I have a couple more high-end cameras, but it does not mean that you cannot just get a regular camcorder and start filming with that. So let's get into first my main camera. So this is the camera that I'm gonna utilize for my tree arm. I'll go through the lens that I run on it for certain situations. Mind you, I'm mainly a bow hunter, so a lot of the shots that I'm taking are closer. Uh, I'll take off the mic here just to begin, but I am utilizing the Sony a7R III. It's a mirrorless camera. You can find them on pretty much any camera website, Best Buy, uh, Facebook Marketplace, whatever. I love this camera because it's super light. Uh, I don't think this one has the weather resistance on it, but that's okay. I usually don't film when it's raining or snowing mainly, or at least I try not to because you really want to take care of this equipment. If the sensor gets scratched or wet or anything like that, that's just going to be thousands of dollars extra that you have to spend. So with this camera, I'm utilizing the 70-300 to 300 Sony G Master lens. Now, I will say, during the early season, when your shots are only going to be within, let's say, 15 to 20 yards, where sometimes early season there's a lot of leaves on the trees, branches, vines, just, you know, areas that are going to be really tight, really tight shots. Then I'll utilize another lens, which I'll show you here. This is the Sigma, and this is a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. I love this lens. You can utilize a 24 to 70 for your in-stand interviews if you don't have a second angle, which I'll get into my second angle camera after this. But the 24 to 70 is a is a very good lens, especially if you're bow hunting whitetails. I probably wouldn't recommend it if you're going to be elk hunting. Um, again, it's really a really good lens for getting B-roll shots of you know whether you're filming gear, equipment, uh, you know interviews of yourself, or just anything like that. It's going to be really good. And then anytime you're filming deer that are going to be close. Now, sometimes side note, just a little. No, I wouldn't even call it a pro tip, but just something that I was doing during the mid-season is I would essentially leave the 70 to 300 meter lens, millimeter lens, in my pack. I would keep this one on, and I would film essentially everything, B-roll, going into the stand, getting into the stand, all of the wildlife and B-roll within the stand, and then I would switch it over. Then I would, the hunt would be on, I would film all of my deer um, with the 70 to 300. Now, one thing to note, and this is something that I never learned when I was getting into this stuff, and that is your frame rate. What's good about the Sony a7R III, unlike the Canon R6, is you can film in 120 frames per second, which is awesome. And it'll film the audio in 120 frames per second. That's really important because you really wanna film all of your wildlife, AKA the deer, essentially any wildlife, deer, birds, squirrels, any type of wildlife, insects, all that stuff, you wanna film it in 120 frames per second. That's gonna allow you to, in post-edit, go through and do all the edits you need to make for slow-mo, lighting, etc. Now, when you're filming your B-roll, anything that is narrative, you wanna go and utilize 60 frames per second, or 24, 24 is preferred. And if you can, 
film in 24 frames per second with 4K. Now, I just recently started using a camera, which I'll go into now, but before I get into that, 24 to 70 millimeter lens for close-up shots and or wildlife in 120 frames, B-roll, 24 frames. 70 to 300, it can stretch out a little bit more. You can get closer in on the deer. And this is just another great lens for, again, bow hunting mainly. You can gun hunt with it as well, but in post-edit, you're gonna have to make sure it's not too grainy when you actually go to edit it within Photoshop or Final Cut or whatever you use for your editing software. So I'll get into my second angle camera. And uh, I will say with the Sony a7R III, it's a very great, great camera because the, the megapixels and the ISO are great. It goes up to 32,000 ISO. I'm not going to get into the specifics of what ISO is and shutter speed, but that stuff is really important when you actually are filming uh, because that basically is how much light is able to get into the camera. And it's going to constantly have to be adjusted when you're shooting, which I shoot in um, auto. But that's one thing you have to look at, especially when it comes to post-edit, so you don't have super grainy film or really dark film, and then it's just stuff that you have to throw away. Now, for the second angle, I will say that this is the best second angle camera I have ever seen, I've ever used. I praise this camera to death. It's a little vlog camera. It is the Canon G7X. This little thing is amazing. It is perfect for filming interviews. It is perfect for filming that second angle. You can put a microphone on it. I mean, it's it's a fairly expensive camera for as small it is. Do not let it fool you. This camera, you could film pretty much everything with this. Um, I mean, it goes all the way up to 36 millimeters, but it also goes out to like 8.8 .8 millimeters to just get like a super wild, wide angle lens. I just love the clarity of this camera as well. It shoots in 4K, which when you're doing your stand interviews and your B-roll in the stand, this is just amazing. It's super user friendly. I shoot it in auto mode and it is just super clean, super crisp. Again, I'll put clips up of this actual camera because it's amazing, I love it. Now, that's the two cameras that I run. Those are the lenses that I run. Again, I'm using a mirrorless camera and then I'm using like a vlog style camera as my second angle. So my main angle is gonna be with my mirrorless camera, which again, you can get fairly cheap, but also, you can utilize a, a camcorder if you need to as well. Sony, Canon, all these companies make camcorders as well, which some people argue that they are a little bit easier to use when you're sol solo filming because you can adjust with a stick for your zoom, whereas on the zoom lens, you actually have to fidget with it while you're in the tree. At the same time, there's deer in front of you and you have to grab your bow and sometimes it can be a mess. You really have to figure out what works for you to not be seen and just stay undetected and still get some really quality footage. Let's go into the microphone. Um, I do not have it with me, it's upstairs right now, but Rode makes great products. Um, if it's not a super windy day or a rainy day or a day where there's like a lot of noise, if I'm hunting in a really suburban area, I will run the Rode shotgun mic on top. They make the wind cover for it for those windy days and it still sounds great. And I will say, if I don't utilize this, the Rode Go To mics, they are Bluetooth mics that just attach on the the transmitter attaches on the top of the camera. The second piece just goes into your pocket and you can run a lavalier to your um, collar or whatever it may be. And they are awesome. Their battery life is amazing. They charge with a C charger. They're really tiny, really compact. And uh, I, I really think they are great for using them for bow season, um, gun season as well. I mean, it, it, if you shoot a gun, it doesn't sound very bad post audio, but for post edit and just filming really good audio. Those are amazing Bluetooth mics. And uh, actually on my last hunt that I killed Blade, I was utilizing the, the, the Rode 2 Go mic, the Lavalier. It's just a lot nicer. It's a little bit more slimmer on the camera as well. It's not this huge shotgun mic on top of the camera. It's just a little um, transmitter, transponder on top. Um, and so yeah, so that's what I utilize for audio. It sounds great. But I will say, <laughs> just a little bit of a tip. Unfortunately, when I was filming one of my friend's recoveries uh, this season, I did not have it plugged in to the right slot, and so I missed out on all that audio. So you have to make sure that if you are gonna utilize a mirrorless camera, you are plugging the aux into the right spot. So, rookie, mis rookie mistake by me. Now, let's go into the camera mounts. This is kind of the last piece, and again, I pack all this stuff in, I pack all this stuff out, but there's two specific mounts that I utilize for my main camera and then my second angle. 
So I got, got this off of Amazon. This literally is just like a screw in step and you can see it has this adapter on it that just screws on, comes like that, and it allows you to screw in any camera. So this is perfect for the Canon. It just goes into the bottom here and I will screw this into the tree and then I will adjust the camera however I need it. So this is really awesome because it really easily allows you, and this Canon G7X has a flip up screen, so you can see exactly what your second angle looks like, especially if you're solo filming, what your interview is gonna look like. It's awesome, I love it. This is a handy little tool, you can get them super cheap on Amazon, and uh, I think they come from China or something like that, so pretty cheap, and uh, definitely worth getting this for your second angle. Now, for the main camera. I don't know if Muddy makes this mount anymore, but this is one of the most durable pieces of equipment I've probably ever taken to the woods. It's super sturdy. It's a little heavy. Um, it's probably six or seven pounds, but I will say that this stays super secure to the tree. And this is the piece of equipment that is gonna allow you to easily have your camcorder or your mirrorless camera, DLS DSLR, whatever, to be as steady and as smooth as possible especially if you're self-filming, you wanna have the smoothest transitions when you're grabbing your gear and camera. And so you can see the second piece that comes with it, I put my own fluid head on the top. This is from uh, Newer. It's um, just a company that makes fluid heads. Just attach that on there, it screws right on, goes into here. And so you can see this allows you to basically go 360 around the tree. You have your fluid head and you can make your adjustments based off that. It has this level bubble here as well, just to make sure that your camera is uh, indeed straight level, and then you can mess with it while you're in the tree, whether you're in a crooked tree, a straight tree, whatever, uh, so that you can have the best smooth footage. Okay. That's mainly it when it comes to the camera gear. Like I said, it's very cheap. Um, to get into the filming piece. You know, you don't need a $2,000 mirrorless camera. You know, I really had to work up from that going from even now iPhones. I mean, I'm filming this on an iPhone. The new iPhones, I mean, really the last, you could really say the last six or seven iPhones have amazing cameras on them. So, I mean, it just comes down to a couple things. And that is just staying resilient because this stuff can get frustrating when you're messing with a bunch of equipment, you're in the tree, you may not have someone that can film you all the time, and that's okay. But if you can get these little items to make it easier, then that's what, you know, that's sometimes what you need to do. Because this equipment here is very basic, it's very simple. Sometimes you do need to invest and, and just build your way up to certain equipment to get the quality of content that you really want to create. Whether, again, that be for YouTube, just for your friends and family, or just memories that you want to share down the road. And so that's why I kind of got into this. I really wanted to start documenting a lot of this stuff with my friends, my family, a lot of these hunts. You'll see some great content coming soon. Cannot wait to show you guys. And I just really appreciate the support. And so, like I said, I've been getting a lot of questions about the camera gear, what I run, and I really hope this helps. Leave a comment in, in the uh, comment section if you want to see more detailed stuff about the filming piece of it, how I pack my pack, the, the certain pack that I run, I'll leave the link to the video that I did for my mid-season setup. Um, for Sitka gear specifically, I tried out some more gear this year, and so I'm gonna do another gear review on that. It's January, 2024, so we still have about one month left of the deer season here in Maryland, so I'm looking to uh, hopefully get one more nice mature buck down on the ground because we have a couple running around, and so that's kind of my focus for the next three weeks, but thanks for watching the video. Leave a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. I'm going to keep coming out with some really good content, educational content, hunting content, and really whatever you guys want to watch. And uh, it's, it's really fun for me. It's an outlet, and I'm just glad that I can share some of this stuff. Looking to do some more educational stuff based off of you know early, mid-season, and late-season deer tactics for whitetails, bow hunting specifically. Not only different ways to become a better bow hunter, because I'm by, by no means the, the greatest bow hunter in the world. I don't think anybody will be because these are really smart animals and we just learn stuff about them every single day. But just whether it be packing gear, learning learning the whitetail biology and deer movement and deer sign and just the whole 
basis of how you can just get that upper edge on these mature whitetails. That's the stuff that we're going to bring you guys, and I'm really looking forward to it. So with that being said, we're going to close this one out, and um, we'll catch you in the next one.